dear friend, um, it is a pleasure to thank uh, Laide Chiaffo, Valeria Paradies, and Javier Scanet for their chapter on the topic of Inoka and Minoka. And I would like to ask Valeria why this topic is important and so why clinicians should be aware of Inoka and Minoka patients. Thank you, Piera. Ischemia and myocardial infarction without obstructive coronary artery disease still represent a conundrum for the treating physicians. These two clinical conditions are frequently overlooked, symptoms misdiagnosed, and the treatment not tailored to the underlying etiology. The aim of this chapter is to summarize the current evidence to provide recommendations on how to best treat these patients and to raise awareness among the scientific community on how these two clinical conditions can impact not only on the quality of life of our patients, but also on their prognosis and on our healthcare system. So thank you, Valeria. Um, Alaide, please, I, I ask you, what are the key messages of your chapter which summarize, as Valeria said, all the data on Inoka and Minoka? So first, Inoka and Minoka, that are clearly two completely different kind of conditions, both share the fact that they are not benign condition as uh, someone can think. They can affect patient quality of life, causing disability, and carrying in a different ways and higher risk of maze. Both uh, need a patient-centered comprehensive approach for their management. And uh, it is different between Inoka and Minoka. In Inoka, uh, recently we have uh, the possibility during our coronary angiogram that is uh, indicated because these are patients with ischemia and positive and or positive stress tests, we can do interventional diagnostic procedure with guideware testing and vasoreactivity testing that help us to diagnose the different Inoka endotype and according to endotype to give a tailored uh, therapy on Inoka. And for Minoka, the same, uh, we need to have uh, diagnosis according to the different etiology with a comprehensive multimodality diagnostic workup to elucidate uh, the current etiology range from epicardial to microvascular disorder. So uh, these mostly are, which are the key messages, not benign, it is correlated with major adverse cardiac events and need um, a diagnostic approach that is tailored according to the condition that will lead to different uh, treatment of the patients. So I think very important message for our clinician, but uh, it seems like we have a lot to learn still. So I would ask Javier, uh, what he, what he envisage for the future on this field? Which studies, which data on diagnosis and treatment of Inoka and Minoka? Thank you, Piera. Well, um, obviously, a great, a great advancement in, in knowledge was obtained with um, in recent trials, particularly a Coromica trial, which demonstrated that, um, as uh, has been highlighted by Valeria and by Elaide, if you uh, have objective evidence on what is the mechanism of vascular dysfunction, then you can, uh, you can uh, enforce um, effective treatments. Uh, and in, with that, you can improve the quality of life of patients and reduce angina. What we don't know yet is whether we can improve uh, prognosis of patients. We know that uh, microvascular dysfunction uh, is associated with poorer prognosis in the long term. And we have now to understand if we are able to modify prognosis, how to modify prognosis, and in whom we can modify prognosis. It may happen actually that the information that we are obtaining in some patients is, you know, a, a light in the red light uh, in terms of saying that someone with cardiovascular risk factors has a particular, uh, you know, response, very heterogeneous response to cardiovascular risk factors, which actually is deleterious in these particular patients. So I think that we are going to, um, in the near future, we will have trials that will tell us how to identify patients at a higher risk. And uh, in a second wave, probably we'll have information on how we can uh, formulate tailored treatments that may modify prognosis. So lots of work ahead. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be facilitated also by better tools 
to uh, assess what happens in the in the in micro circulation and perhaps also uh, uh, to broaden the spectrum of um, the endotypes of microvascular dysfunctions that we are now uh, operating with. So it is a very exciting field. And uh, once again, thank you for your contribution. And I really would like to suggest our colleagues to read this chapter that is very helpful for their clinical practice and stay tuned in this, uh, in this field. Thank you.